The fight to end the HIV AIDS epidemic by 2030 is continued continue today rather at the launch of a three-day HIV combination prevention meeting. We can end AIDS by 2030, we really can, but we can't. Declaration to end HIV is a public health threat by the year 2030. The United Nations said Thursday that it was still possible to end AIDS by 2030. But In the last two decades, the global community has been working towards achieving the third sustainable development goal, which aims to end the HIV AIDS by 2030. Known as Project 2030, this ambitious target emerged from the extensive discussions and assessments of the progress made in HIV AIDS prevention and control. The Joint United Nations Programs on HIV AIDS, also called UN AIDS, has been a driving force behind the goal, advocating for a comprehensive strategy to reduce both new HIV infections and AIDS-related deaths by 90% between 2010 and 2030. To operationalize this objective, the United Nations General Assembly convened a high-level meeting in 2016, solidifying the commitment to end the epidemic. One key metric in measuring progress is the fast-track targets, often referred to as 90-90-90 goals, set to be achieved by 2020. These targets emphasize that 90% of people living with HIV should know their status, 90% of those aware should have access to treatment, and 90% of those on treatments should achieve viral suppression. Attaining these milestones was expected to lead a substantial reduction in new HIV infections and AIDS-related deaths, bringing them below 500,000 by 2020. As we approach the 2030 deadline, an in-depth analysis reveals a mixed picture of progress. AIDS-related deaths have shown a significant decline globally, dropping from a peak of 1.9 million in 2004 to 0 0.77 million in 2018. Noteworthy success stories include Eastern and Southern Africa, where AIDS-related deaths fell by 44% between 2010 and 2018. Some countries, like Australia, have even declared the end of AIDS, signalling a remarkable achievement. However, the same cannot be said for new HIV infections, which have not decreased the anticipated rate. The decline between 2010 and 2021 was only 19%, indicating that the current trajectory is insufficient to meet the Project 2030 target. Variability across regions and concerning trends in certain populations such as young females in Southern Africa and people who inject drugs in Eastern Europe present challenges that demand urgent attention. This raises critical questions about the feasibility of achieving Project 2030 and what happens beyond this deadline. Is there an endgame for HIV or are we transitioning to an era of endemic HIV necessitating of a different approach to health systems? To delve into these complexities, it is essential to not only assess the progress made, but also scrutinize the epidemiological terms and slogans employed in Project 2030. While strides have been made towards Project 2030, the road ahead is fraught with challenges that require careful consideration. The divergent trajectories of AIDS-related deaths and new HIV infections indicate a nuanced landscape, prompting a re-evaluation of the strategies employed by the fight against HIV and AIDS. The notion of ending the epidemic of HIV AIDS by 2030 is intricate, involving different scenarios such as elimination, eradication, epidemic HIV or endemic HIV. It is crucial to understand these scenarios to contextualize the potential outcomes beyond the current project. For instance, elimination involves reducing incidence and prevalence to zero in a specific area, 
while eradication is the reduction of global incidence or prevalence to zero. As we navigate this terrain, it becomes apparent that while the world has achieved success in curbing AIDS-related deaths, the decline in new HIV infections is insufficient. The global community must grapple with regional variations and targeted interventions for population experiencing an upward trend in HIV incidence. The success of Project 2030 is contingent on several factors, including political commitment, sustained funding and a shift in the approach to HIV prevention and control. The need for unrelenting political commitment is underscored by the recognition that even if Project 2030 is achieved, HIV will persist as an endemic public health problem. This demands a departure from a purely vertical response to an integrated health systems approach that provides services based on disease burden and population needs. The challenges identified in sustaining Project 2030 underscore the importance of a holistic response. It is not merely about achieving numerical targets, but transforming the way we perceive and address HIV and AIDS in the broader context of health systems. The call for increased and sustainable funding is particularly poignant as the current reluctance to invest in HIV poses a threat to the gains made and the overall trajectory of a global health. Moving beyond Project 2030, four potential scenarios come into focus. Elimination, eradication, epidemic HIV or endemic HIV. While elimination and eradication may seem challenging within the specified timeline, achieving epidemic control offers a more realistic goal. This involves ensuring that new HIV infections remain lower than deaths among people living with HIV, gradually reducing the burden over time. The conclusion of Project 2030 marks not just a milestone but a crossroads in the relentless pursuit of a HIV-free world. As we peer into the future, the trajectory of HIV is shaped not by an endgame but by an evolving endemic state that shows a transformative shift. The dichotomy between epidemic and endemic mandates a recalibration of our responses paving the way for a holistic, integrated approach that transcends the boundaries of traditional vertical interventions. In contemplating the future of HIV beyond Project 2030, one must grapple with the nuanced interplay between biological realities, social-political dynamics and the evolving landscape of global health. The narrative of HIV does not consist of conquering your enemy, but of coexistence, a complex tapestry where successes and challenges collide into a continuum of care, resilience and adaptability. The metaphorical transition from epidemic to endemic ushers in an era where HIV becomes a normalized facet of public health, not confined to the realm of emergency responses and exceptionalism. This normalization calls for a departure from the conventional and an embrace of the integrated. HIV, now related to non-communicable diseases in its chronicity, demands a multifaceted approach, one that involves behavior modification, lifelong medication, vigilant monitoring and patient education. As we navigate this uncharted terrain, parallels emerge between the management of HIV and NCDs, blurring the lines between infectious and chronic diseases. The spectrum of care extends beyond mere medical interventions to encompass a broader public health approach, recognizing the interconnectedness of health determinants. This realization prompts a seismic shift from the narrow lens of vertical interventions to the expansive vista of integrated health systems. The integration of health programs into broader health systems is not a simple binary choice but a nuanced spectrum. A diagonal approach emerges as a pragmatic bridge merging elements of both vertical and horizontal strategies. 
This combination allows for targeted interventions, gradual integration and adaptive learning. It is a dynamic process, a synthesis of best practices, and an acknowledgement that health systems are not monolithic entities, but living, evolving ecosystems. Moreover, the evolving landscape necessitates a metamorphosis in global health architecture and financing mechanisms. The transition from disease-specific approaches to a more comprehensive model aligns with the changing panorama of global health challenges. The rising prominence of incurable communicable chronic diseases and non-communicable diseases underscores the imperative for a holistic approach to health financing. Disease burden and health systems capacity becomes the compass guiding the allocation of resources, ensuring effectiveness, efficiency and sustainability. In this transformative journey, existing funds mechanisms must undergo a process of reorientation. The Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria could evolve into a broader Global Fund for Health. This metamorphosis is not just a semantic shift, but a reflection of the changing dynamics of health challenges worldwide. Such transformation requires visionary leadership and unwavering political support at both national and global levels. In conclusion, the culmination of Project 2030 does not signify the end but rather a new beginning in the story of HIV. The endemic nature of HIV invites us to reimagine our approaches, embrace integration and chart a course towards universal health coverage. The complexities of this narrative demand not just adaptability but resilience, not just traditional solutions but innovative visions, and not just a temporary victory but a sustained commitment to a healthier global community.